Well, we're going to wrap up this module and take a look at the different types of diagrams that you may run into and what it takes and what you need to identify for each part of a, a schematic or circuit diagram. Most of the components that you'll run into will have a wiring diagram. This shows the physical wiring of the system and it gives the components more in a pictorial type diagram rather than a symbolic diagram. So it, the fan limit control kind of looks like this in real life. The transformer kind of looks like this in real life as well. It, uh, it shows the physical wiring and wire colors for each of these devices so it helps so you can pick the wire up on the fuse disconnect you find the white wire and you can trace it over physically to the fan relay contact and so on and so forth the one thing to note is this symbol right here where it's like a little bridge where it jumps over the wire those wires are not connected to each other they just pass by each other on the older schematic diagrams when a wire passes by each other and they're not connected it may look like this if they're not connected and if they are connected it's going to have a dot in the middle right here to symbolize that they're connected similar to the this right here this is a a connection of these wires are connected together these wires over here are not and just bypass each other so that's how those those are designated. Remember the older schematics may not have that little jump or bridge over the top. So that is physically how these are wired and then the simplified schematic diagram disregards the colors of the wire and the physical wiring and makes it in a more more complete and simple way to read and it'll complete one one complete circuit in each each leg as best that it can so it's easier to troubleshoot each leg of the circuit. And then down below here you have the legend. So they get bigger and more complex as the schematics get bigger and more complex. But the FM stands for the fan motor. GV stands for gas valve. TR stands for transformer and so on. So that's how you identify those, those components is by the legend. So a ladder diagram. See this one has a pretty big legend over here. A lot, of com lot more components. Bigger legend. You can go through that and take a look at that in your book. But th the purpose of a ladder diagram is it breaks each circuit down like rungs of a ladder. So if you look at if you look at this top portion up here you have L1 and L2 coming in, that's usually the, the legs of your ladder, are the power legs, and then each load and all of its control devices are the rungs of the ladder. So there's one rung, and here is our compressor rung of the ladder. So if you have compressor issues, you will start right here at this rung of the ladder. You don't have to worry about these other rungs at, at this time. And then here's another rung of the ladder. And what do we have here? What's the HR? Holding relay, compressor contactor, and timer. So this is going to be more than likely our defrost control circuit. So there's another rung here. And then here's our outdoor fan motor rung of the ladder right here. So we have each line voltage rung of the ladder done in parallel. Then we have our transformer. Let's uh, do away with that. We have our transformer dividing the high voltage side, which is here, from the low voltage side. And then you have your low voltage rung of the ladder. Then, there you'll have your thermostat, your indoor fan motor, relay contactors, your gas valve, and so forth on those rungs of the ladder. So that's your ladder diagram. It breaks it down into each individual circuit as best it possibly can.
So we're going to take a step back and take a look at a really simple diagram, a schematic diagram, and we're going to break out the four things you need for a complete circuit, and this will help you with your troubleshooting in the future. Okay, so in this schematic diagram and in every every circuit, you need to have a voltage source, whether it be a battery or line voltage or a transformer, whatever it may be, you have to have a voltage source. And you also need a load device. That is what does the work. In this instance, it's a light bulb. It could be a motor, a compressor, a gas valve, or any device that does any type of work. There's also a control device, which is a switch. Then this schematic diagram, we have a manually controlled switch to open and close the circuit. And in air conditioning, we're going to have high pressure switches, low pressure switches. We're going to have temperature controlled switches and so forth. So there may be more than one switch, but there is at least one switch in every circuit to turn it on and off. And then there's wires to carry the, the power. If any one of these four items in a circuit are faulty, it's not going to work. So in this, in this case, if the battery is dead, the light bulb doesn't light. If the switch is bad, the light bulb doesn't light. If the light bulb's bad, the light bulb doesn't light. And if the wire's broken, the light bulb doesn't light. So you're always looking for why is the load not doing the work it's supposed to. And these are the four components that you need to make sure are present in a circuit and to check in a circuit to see if it's not working. The other thing is I want to reiterate the state of a circuit. So here we have a schematic diagram where the, where the switch is open, but then we're looking at this and the switch is closed. So when you are troubleshooting, remember the state of a circuit, the state of the schematic is the circuit at rest. The load is not, none of the loads are doing any of the work. It, it has power applied and it's waiting for something to happen, waiting for the switch to switch to turn on. So all this, always the schematic diagrams are going to be in that resting state. But when the switch is flipped, you now have to read your schematic diagram, know that this switch is now physically switched and is closed. And that is sometimes confusing when you look at a schematic diagram and the lights on and you see the switch is open and physically the switch is closed. So just remember that state of the schematic is at rest. The load isn't doing any work and usually the switches are not switched, but everything is present in the circuit that it needs to make a complete circuit. All right, so that wraps it up. For this module, we will move on to inductance and capacitance and those different types of circuits. And then we'll throw Ohm's law into the mix there to uh, get make it even more confusing. But when we get done, we'll have it all figured out.